I am in North Bay at the Little Caesars and uh, I am starting a trip tomorrow which is like a break trip. I'm going to Wicksteed Lake and that's just to recover in between trips because there are no portages and it should be easy. Got a bunch of nice food and I'm just gonna have some R&R &R. and also uh, I think I have cell phone signal there so I can check on email and see if uh, anyone wants to give me a job. That'd be nice. And I've eaten a lot in North Bay. I've been here for like five hours. I got Harvey's and some other stuff. And I always get Little Caesars when I pass through North Bay on a camping trip, so I had to. And I'm not really even hungry, but after that first bite, I know I made an amazing decision. It was delicious. First bite of pizza in a few weeks, and that's not healthy. Pizza is a major food group, and uh, I really needed this. Anyway. I'm going to drive to my access point and hopefully find somewhere to sleep in the car for a few hours before waking up early to paddle in and hopefully beat uh, some rain. I am about um, 50 meters from the access point, which is just over that way. And there was a truck over there with its lights on and it's almost midnight and you're not allowed to camp there so that's sketchy. And this location is already sketchy in the first place. Yeah. So, uh, good thing is I'm extremely tired. And hopefully I can uh, fall asleep for a few hours, wake up early, and get to camp. Coming up on 6 a.m. I've been up since 5. And mercifully got uh, two and a half or three hours of sleep. And I'm just waiting for a crack of daylight to get started. I don't want to go over there to the launch in the dark, nor do I want to paddle in the dark when I can just wait a little longer. But those people never left, so yeah, they must be just camping there. So, a lot of paranoia for nothing. Uh, I ended up talking to the people who were out with the flashlights last night. Nicest people. <laughs> Super nice. Two dogs. They were in the exact same boat as me. Uh, they arrived last night and they were thinking about paddling out but they figured ah we'll just sleep in the car and leave early in the morning oh <laughs> all that worry for nothing <laughs> they weren't burglars <laughs> Missed them. <laughs> I just came in to grab this piece of driftwood here, because the island I'm going to stay on has none, no, no real firewood, and there were two moose there. Cool. All right, pulling up to camp. This little island is going to be home for the next three nights. And ugh, look terrible. <laughs> we gotta get some sleep. I got these bags under my eyes, worse than normal. Maybe I'm just getting old. Be 30 in two months. I don't really care. <laughs> just a number. Anyway, cheers to a wonderful day, Wicksteed. Despite the rain, I'm having a great time. morning I've got another nice meal I've got a uh, cinnamon roll donut and some French vanilla coffee here so should be a rainy day but uh, I'll just continue eating well and hopefully the rain will stop for a bit and I can go in the hammock fish on smally I think it's 
buddy. It's eight o'clock and I am about to crawl into the tent and spend the next 11 hours there until sunrise because it's just a, a nasty day. It's been exceedingly windy, rain sometimes. Oh, last night was one of those super long nights that feels like it'll never end. It was very cold and just very restless. Couldn't get much sleep at all. I'm warming up with a good fire. And I got a hot donut, hot coffee on the way. So, at least I can get warm. But hopefully it gets nice out today so I can uh, rest in the hammock, catch up on sleep there. I can always sleep in the hammock right now, but I'm having a lot of trouble sleeping on my sleeping mat after a whole summer of doing so. My back's just not in a good spot. Almost five o'clock now, and uh, I've been in the, in the hammock for hours. Just reading, it's still very, very windy, and uh, not doing weather, it's still very cold. And the sky's supposed to clear up, it's starting to now. Um, actually, you can kind of, there's a pretty distinct edge to this uh, cloud there, right up there. So it's all blowing over, things are looking up. Oh, and man, that sun feels amazing. I've, I haven't really had sun since that wind picked up, uh, which was like, I don't know two days ago almost. And what seed is looking really just beautiful right now. Just past 8 a.m. and camp is packed up. Just couldn't resist uh, dropping by my bass honey hole on this lake because it's not far off my route and I haven't been to it yet. So, let's see. Just got one smallie, uh, so it's time to move on. I have a uh, paddle back to the car, and then a uh, over four hours of driving, I need to connect with uh, civilization for a bit, get groceries. So I've lost to do it today. Best to get started so I can have a good next trip, which is really more important. I have arrived at Sothman Lake, and this is where I'm going to kick off the Grassy River Loop here uh, in northern Tomogamy. Anyway, I'm going to get uh, settled in, and I think I'll just sleep in the car tonight, and then I can get going tomorrow morning. It's quarter past five, and I can no longer toss and turn in the front seat of the car. I have to sit up and just be awake. Managed to get about four hours of sleep in, but that's fine because look at this forecast. You couldn't ask for a better forecast. It's almost 7 a.m. I'm on my way. And the loons are going crazy around here.
no deadfall on this one, but uh, lots of ferns. Now to get back out of this wetland. Yeah, the takeouts are clearly just consistently not very good. Pretty overgrown. Man, the pike in this lake are super aggressive. That first one inhaled the bait, and this guy T-boned this lure. Look at that. Oh, ow! Enjoying some hammock time here after a pretty long, tiring day. But a great day. Beautiful weather. Beautiful site. Reestablished the fire pit there and the rest of the site in general. Cleared some paths over there. It's weird how uh, unused it seemed. It's a great site, great water access beauty. First walleye of the trip. Just a little one. Oh. Nice little fish. Thanks buddy. This river sure is living up to its name. It's pretty thick. If you had to paddle through this and a headwind, it'd be pretty slow going. But at least uh, that keeps all the boats out. I didn't realize it was so choked up in here. Often you have to stand up just to see where you're going. So thick. And these grasses are covered in seeds, and they're just filling up the boat right now. <laughs> Not to mention uh, these spiders. Little spiders, they can close themselves up really thin so they can uh, hide behind the blades of grass. Uh, but yeah, there are lots of those in the boat too. They're even making spider webs on my legs. And then these little like moth things too. Everything that's on the grass is falling into the boat. Not even 9 a.m. and it's already very warm. Today is supposed to be an unseasonable scorcher. The high is like 26 or something, and it's mid-September in northern northeastern Ontario. So that's pretty darn hot. This about sums up today. Little dink pike. There's some loons over there. One thing about the warmth is it's bringing a lot of insects back to life, including most mosquitoes. I've killed some noceums, and uh, I swear I've killed a couple black flies. I don't know if it's possible for them to come back at this time of year, but I swear a couple of them look like black flies, which is <laughs> agonizing, an agonizing thought. Uh, I've already gone through two black fly seasons. One in south central Ontario, and then after black fly season there, I went way up north, north of Superior, and got a second black fly season. I'm not mentally prepared for a third. Well, I know video can't pick it up, but uh, I'm looking at the aurora right now, very faintly. It's like 
twilight, but on the northern horizon. And a little bit green. And it's not much, but uh, it's super exciting for me. This is just thrilling, even this. It's just a glow. It's not even shimmering green lights or anything. But just the thought of it being close, I'm excited. back on the river and it's looking so beautiful right now. Sun's up and there's dew covering all the tall grass here. Water is perfectly calm. And the air, I wish I could, I always wish I could capture smells on video. I think it would be the next revolution in TV. Uh, the air smells so sweet right now, it's just beautiful. Is that a moose? Clomping through the water over there. Can't see it, but I can hear it. It's gotta be a moose. Oh, there. It's a bear. That's bizarre. Oh, I should probably get going. It's coming. It's coming right for me. Not that far away. That's interesting. <laughs> what I expected to see here. Oh, that's a smallish bear. Okay. Now I'm not too worried. And he's turning around. What's he doing in there? Cool. I've still got a fish on the line. <laughs> Anyway, he's still mucking around over there. I'm gonna get this fish off. Oh my goodness. Absolutely inhaled this curly tail. I don't know, I don't know how they get so much in their little mouths. Make sure this bear doesn't get too close. He's going the other way now, so it should be fine. Finally, on the southern site on uh, Ferris Lake and it's got an incredible view. Beautiful cliff over there on the tops of the hills around here the uh, the canopy is starting to change. For whatever reason the west side of this lake is pretty much is predominantly deciduous um, so I'm wishing right now that I was here in a few weeks when it peaked. There's some bird up there Probably just a crow. Uh, but yeah, the site's pretty good. Now it's time to set up camp. But first, this absolutely needs to happen. Oh, 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 it's freezing. Oh. 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 <laughs> Nothing about that was enjoyable. <laughs> that was just for sanitary purposes. Oh. And it was really hot. Been in the sun all day. And it's uh it's baking me today. It's really hot. Oh, I can finally relax. That was long. It uh, took seven hours and 20 minutes. I, I was predicting it was going to take seven hours with a uh, tailwind. So I should do it in seven hours and 20 minutes. It was uh, 
not bad with the headwind. Uh, and I estimated it was 27 kilometers and it was pretty much bang on. I was just estimating using the topo map and kind of guessing the length of the river. And it was worth it. This is a beautiful spot. So I'm happy to be here. But uh, that wind killed me today. I'm zonked. And to add an insult to injury, literally injury because it's re aggravated all my lingering injuries. Uh, the wind, as I was paddling down Ferris Lake, shifted from like south southwest over to west. It was starting to hit me uh, broadside. And now it's blowing north-northwest, which is what it was supposed to do. <laughs> oh well. Can't fret about it. At least I got good sunshine today. Too much, almost. Might be a little sunstroked. Uh, but now I can relax a little and then make dinner, because I'm starving. I didn't stop all day. At least Ferris Lake is really beautiful. I'm really glad that I got here today because now I'm going to take a rest day tomorrow and spend the full day here. Because every time I come around a corner, there's another hill like that one there. Beautiful. This has to be decent fish, unless it's just fouled, because it almost ripped the rod out of the holder. <laughs> There's definitely some weight there. Couldn't say yet though. But man, maybe the rod was just at a weird angle in the holder, but almost lost it. Oh, no, it's not big. What is it? Walleye? I think it's a walleye. Yeah, it's a nice walleye. Oh man. Exactly what I want for lunch, but it's pretty early. There he is. Be nice for the for lunch, but look at that dorsal fin. Shredded. Can't wait anymore, stole a little piece. Oh, so good, every time. Never gets old. Go for a few days without meat, and then have some fresh caught fish. It's so, so good. Just spotted a moose way over there. Saw a dark shadow and Pulled out the monocular and sure enough, it's a moose. Let's see if I can get in closer. I'm way away now. I'm below the cliffs. Getting closer now. I'm gonna see if I can get in even closer. I don't think she has noticed me yet. There she is. 
not gonna hurt you. I'm not gonna hurt you. It's okay. Stay there. It's okay. Hopefully my camera's on that. Yeah, I think so. Good. Hey, girl. Getting ready for the rut or what? Got the camera on the tripod, obviously. I'm just trying to get in closer. Oh no! Just as I was going to try and get a good shot there. Oh well, that was awesome. All the while, this is the view behind me. Ferris Lake is definitely an amazing place. And this route, while I was skeptical initially, is uh, definitely making an impression. I've seen a number of pictographs over the years. But this is the coolest because I didn't know it was here. It was like I discovered it, even though I'm sure others have seen it. Or them. But this is so cool. Really vivid, too. Another one over here. And I'm drifting. I'm going to have to paddle back, but that's awesome. I was looking at this little cliff from... Uh, from the water and thought that's as good a place as, of any, as any for uh, pictographs and sure enough I knew it as soon as it hit. <laughs> oh, 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 no, I don't want to get wet. <laughs> nice, uh, would have been a nice eater walleye, but it's almost dark. There we go. Nice dorsal fin flare. Thanks for that, buddy. That's a nice fish. Thank you. Nice to get in some walleye. They have not been biting during the day at all. I'm on my way uh, back up the creek. I'm out of Ferris Lake now. Heading back to the Grassy River. And today I'm just going to paddle basically until I see something I like. Camp on for tonight and then tomorrow I head back to the car. Still a fair ways to go, I'd say. I don't know. 40 kilometers maybe. There's Sansawaju looming off in the distance. Sansawaju just came back into view. What a beautiful mountain. Nice cliffs. And that canopy starting to change more and more. Man, it makes me wish I was here in two weeks. Cool. It almost has the shape of like a volcano. It's really unique. 
almost in Degrassi Lake now. Evidently there wasn't a site on the river with a view of the mountain, unfortunately. So I hope there's something here on Grassy. I, re I really don't know what the campsite situation is, but as you can see behind me, there's some stuff going on. And I'd really like to get uh, camp set up now. I just, I hope it uh, holds out for tonight because I just want to saddle up in the hammock with my book. That's all I want for the rest of the day. It's been over 25 kilometers now. Finally made it. Over 35 kilometers later, finally setting up camp. Got everything under the trees in case it starts to rain again. Thankfully it didn't last. Canoes turns it upside down because I'm not getting back in it today. There are too many mosquitoes to hang out anymore. All the warmth this week, six days straight, has brought them back. But I'm tired, so whatever. Read in bed for a bit and fall asleep in no time. Packing up in the dark this morning. Still an hour till sunrise, and the lake is covered in fog. I can see that with my flat, my headlamp. All right, it's almost 7 a.m., and I'm on the water. And uh, I was going to explore Loon Wing Lake, but there's no point right now. It's all fogged over. And uh, the last thing I need right now is more a longer day. <laughs> Definitely worn out from yesterday. 35 plus kilometers. Plus the rest of the trip, plus the rest of the summer. <laughs> it's really beautiful here. It's like this big intersection of waterways, water bodies. Yeah, it's just really beautiful here. Look at this. All right, back of the car and uh, the usual post-trip routine. Get batteries charging. There's one main camera battery, another cell phone charging, uh, power bank charging, a small camera I'll charge once there's a port available. Fresh undies and socks, a couple squirts of cologne, and I'm good for the next trip. Time to go. I'm cheating tonight. I'm in Halfway Lake Provincial Park. Getting a little R and R, I suppose. But there are black flies, tons of black flies. This is the third black fly season officially that I have gone through this year. So that's mental health. I uh, uh, had an incredible burger on the way in from uh, Watershed 144. Had a great shower, intense. It's like a fire hose here at the park. And I've got laundry going here too. And now I'm just organizing for tomorrow when a new trip begins. Almost here at the side of the highway. Hey fella.
Keep doing your thing. Spotted that guy coming uh, down Highway 144, a little north of Onapping, heading to my next destination. I'm at the A.Y. Jackson Trail, which is uh, not even an hour northwest of Sudbury up Highway 144. Incredibly worthwhile location, beautiful falls that I think are very unknown to most people, at least from where I'm from, south, southern Ontario. Alright, on to the next trip to Maskinonje Lake. I just finished the last trip yesterday uh, to uh, our, on the grassy river and I was intending on having a rest day in between for my body's sake but uh, I have 15 kilometers to get to my campsite today so that's reasonable and I uh, specifically wanted to leave today based on the forecast which called for a good tailwind to get me there and so far that's holding true. The purpose of this trip is to uh, get some muskies. In a, kind of in the middle of Maskinonje now. That's the south end, east bay, north end, where all the islands are that I'll be camping on. Um, one of them anyway. Without them, this would be way too big of a body of water for me to be canoeing on. And the west bay. It's a massive lake. And right now, it seems like I have it all to myself. Wow. So happy I checked this site out. It's unreal. Stunning view to the north. It does have quite a bit of man-made stuff, but I can overlook it for a site like this. It's incredible. All this junk, old ruined tarps, uh, I'm going to take those to the mainland and walk them into the forest somewhere and leave them there so they're not such a blight on this site, which is otherwise just so great. Look at the sand. Beautiful. Alright, mission complete. Big haul. Found this bag and used it to collect. Uh, these are just the odds and ends. There's a lot more down by the beach. but we got cans. Bottle tops, these fibers from cheap tarps, these are the worst. I must have picked up at least a hundred, maybe two hundred fibers of those. Uh, what else? Rope, lots of glass, little bits of plastic, hard and soft plastic. Anything you can imagine being on a campsite. So here's the main hall. At least uh, half a dozen tarps. An old uh, floaty, broken chair, broken bucket, table, metal, garbage bags, bars of soap, crayon, telephone wire, I think, uh, floor mats from a car, fishing line, tin foil, all kinds of stuff. So it's probably going to have to be two loads. It's so much garbage. Anyway, as I've said before, I really hope this doesn't sound all high and mighty. Uh, I do it for a few reasons. One, for myself, so I can enjoy the site. Two, for the next person. Uh, if they are a good, clean camper, then they can enjoy it. And if they're not, hopefully the clean site will, uh, you know, let them know that it's not a dumpster and hopefully guide their behavior. And three, just, uh, you know, for posting these videos on YouTube, hopefully to set an example. Uh, again, for the good and bad people, for the good people to let them know that there are other people who help clean sites and 
uh, and it's worth doing because together we can keep uh, the sites in good shape. And B, for anyone who's watching who's not a clean camper, well, it's not too late. You can clean up the next campsite you go to and it'll all be okay. Got a great sunset shaping up. It's kind of behind the trees there, but it's looking really nice. Feels great to be out of that tent. I was so worried about that birch tree. And uh, I've had four donuts and coffee. So I'm feeling energized, ready for a job. It's definitely not canoeing weather right now. It's uh, very overcast and very windy now from the opposite direction of yesterday almost. Uh, so I'm gonna take down that birch tree, I think. Try to anyway. Uh, all I've got is a little hatchet um, and a saw, but I don't know. I'll probably use a hatchet. Ideally, I'd have a herd hat and experience but uh, I'll show you. This is the tree that's dead here. And it's well angled away from the trunk, trunk with no uh, limbs hanging over the trunk. So I can hack away at this without really any risk of a limb falling back on me. It'd be extremely improbable. And look where it landed. This dry patch here is my tent. bugs under the bark of this tree, including these beetles here. Alright, the SS Garbage is finally ready to make her maiden voyage. The wind has calmed down a bit, enough that I feel like going to do this. Uh, so I'll be glad to be rid of all this. On this lake? No. But uh, at the very least, it sets a better example. Hopefully, it does. The sun's just popping up over the trees, and I'm just enjoying the simple pleasure of staying warm on a fall morning by the fire, hot coffee, and donuts. And I've decided that uh, today's going to be my last day of camping ever. And by ever, I mean for about 10 days. 
Uh, I'm going to head back to civilization for a bit. Fallen into a bit of a, a malaise. It's becoming a bit routine right now. And uh, if it's not exciting, then it's time for a break. So I'll spend some time with family in the GTA and then uh, resume in October. On my way, feels like the right decision right now. This uh, leg of the trip of the summer has been about three weeks, and that seems to be a tipping point. Every time this summer uh, that I hit about three weeks of continuous camping, this is the third time I've done that this summer, which is really fortunate, but uh, still you hit a point where you just, you need a break. My body's saying it's right right now, even after yesterday, just like under 15 kilometers of paddling, still really sore. Mentally, I could use the break and uh, civilization and social aspects of that. All right, back around the dam. Produces quite a current. I'm moving here pretty fast. Hardly any paddling. A ton of water, big lake that it's draining. Officially had no bites whatsoever on Maskinonja. Maybe it's because it's the first fish of the trip, but I think this is good size. Just minutes back into the next lake where there are fish. Oh yeah. Oh, nice musky. <laughs> I didn't even know this lake had muskies. Oh yeah. <laughs> Vindication. That's crazy though. Hopefully I don't lose it. Oh boy. <laughs> oh. It's not a giant, but it's a good size musky. Uh, as soon as the rod started bending back, I was like, snag or big fish? And I was pleasantly, pleasantly surprised. Oh yeah, <laughs> this thing staying down. Come here. Oh, oh yeah, it's a nice fish. Oh, watch the net job, still on though. I had him going head first into the net and then he thrashed his head and I got body side. Oh boy. And oh it's not that big. It's still decent. Probably eight pounds. There we go, in the net. Girthy though. Definitely pretty thick fish. Oh yeah, it's a good fish. That's pushing, might push 10 pounds. I'm gonna weigh it in the net. 
real quick and then get her back. So with the net, which weighs about a pound heavy, uh, or a pound when it's wet, uh, it's 11 pounds, so it is a 10 pounder. It's nice, double digit fish, surprise. Well, I'm almost back and it's feeling not only like the end of the trip, but really the end of summer. And that's always sad, but uh, I'm looking forward to being in civilization for a bit and I'm sure after a few days in civilization I'll be looking forward to getting back here. I have a couple of trips planned for October and I'm looking forward to some bug free fall camping in a couple of weeks. Alright, heading to the Wolf Lake route this week and I'm off to an interesting start. Absolute failure is a good word for it. Um, Google took us on an interesting route to nowhere. It's an ATV trail. I'm here with Emma. Hi. Hey. Hi. <laughs> yeah, anyway, it's already mid afternoon and we now need to backtrack and find another way to it. So that costs us an hour and a half, and this is uh, gonna be an interesting day for sure. All right, we are on the lake and we are in an unspoken race to the best campsite with our friends over here from the launch. Em's doing a great job. I haven't paddled in several minutes and she's keeping us going. So that's, uh, the trip's off to a great start now. What? Oh yeah, when we're winning the race, we're blowing past them. But we're running into them later. Um, so this hostility is gonna get awkward. All right, it's almost, uh, it's gonna be dark in an hour. So Em and I have settled on a site. It's uh, short of Wolf Lake, so we're still on Madame Agassi. But that's cool. We didn't need to make a big day today. And we're going to camp on Wolf Lake tomorrow anyway. Getting ready for a fire here. I've got Emma processing the firewood. I'm having some wine and cheese. I'm watching. <laughs> You're having wine? Yeah. we got a misty morning here on Madame Agassi. And pretty chilly too. It rained overnight, which is great because got it out of the way. And we're warming up with a fire and a hot breakfast. Left. Oh, we'll see. We'll see if we can see the moose again. Em and I just saw a huge bull moose right over there. I got a photo, but it was too far away for video. And it's just really beautiful here on the north end of Manamagasi. Nice rolling hills. Alright, this is Emma's first portage. I'm letting her handle the canoe. Hopefully she doesn't break. into Sylvester Lake which is looking really beautiful whole day has been just incredibly beautiful so far and we're not even to wolf into wolf lake yet so still lots to come we are in the wolf lake and it is so stunning so far I haven't seen any uh, really mature pines yet but I'm sure we'll get to that just making camp on Wolf Lake now. Drying things out from the rain overnight. And got a great sight. 
spectacular view up here from the cliffs. Just a bushwhack hike, like 10 minutes maybe. Really beautiful. Beautiful lake, Wolf Lake. Wow, that was pretty cool. It's a dreary morning, but we got pancakes going. Snickers pancakes. And coffee. Definitely struggling here. We're in the Dude Knee Lake now, and it's another beautiful lake. Quartzite rocks and mostly red pine forest and azure waters, crystal clear blue. Beautiful route so far. Finally found a true old growth red pine. Incredible, or is this? Yeah, it's red pine. Um, just a giant, unfortunately it's dead, but still just immense. So we're well into Chinaguchi Lake now, which continues to be beautiful. It's the word of the day, word of the trip. Beautiful. And this cliff here is known as the Elephant, according to Jeff's map. And it's pretty spectacular. The wind has just been ferocious today. Luckily, it was at our backs almost the entire time. So, we've had a good day. Em and I are getting breakfast going in a hot fire. Uh, we got blasted by a storm last night. It wasn't that long, but it was intense. But it was pretty cool. Thankfully, it was really mild, incredibly mild. It was probably 16 degrees overnight in October. So at least we're not cold. We're on the last of four small portages into Marjorie Lake. And there are some big pines here too. This one has especially deep ridges pretty cool. We're on Marjorie Lake now, which is an absolute gem. Azure waters, very secluded, beautiful forest. It's got everything. There's one campsite over there at least, and then I think we passed a couple of other ones that would have been viable. And the wind has uh, mostly been favorable today again. So it's just amazing. Can't complain about a thing right now. We're on the portage into Rathwell Lake, and all the portages are pretty good. Getting in and out of them is kind of tricky at the water, but the trails themselves are pretty well cleared and beautiful. There's the odd old growth pine on many of them, and it's a nice wild place. It's beautiful. Now we're on Rathwell Lake and uh, just stopping for lunch. We're going to have some pasta primavera with bacon, 
Got the six stove boiling the water there and we just went in for a dip because it's unseasonably hot here on October 4th. And we were getting kind of hot with all the portages especially. On to the next one. On this portage, we're finally starting to see some of the big pines we were expecting out of Wolf Lake. There's a nice red pine. And then Em and I both agree that this is the biggest pine we've seen all trip. Huge white. For show. Em? Yeah? What? Did we make all 11 portages? No. <laughs> No. Best, no. That's what yeah, that's what counts. We did nine. We did nine of eleven and we have about three, four, maybe five hours of travel left and we just couldn't do it. So we're here back on our original campsite on Wolf Lake and I'm not upset about it one bit. We're having a lovely time. It's going to be the best night. Nice pale sunset and extremely clear sky so Star do some gazing. stargazing stargazing got cold overnight and our first night was chilly too colors are popping out just aren't a lot of them, but the ones that are here are pretty vivid now. Alright, last portage. Em's happy. We're tired. A lot of portages in the last 24 hours. We're back on Matamagasi. All the portages are behind us, all 17 of them for the trip. And it's been an incredible trip. Probably it's top 10 for me and I haven't even caught a fish, so that's saying something. But I'm gonna start trolling and maybe change that. M has been a wonderful 10 out of 10 canoeing partner. She's welcome to my canoe anytime. Okay, last trip of the season. This is day 89 of my camping season. I've been in the backcountry camping for 89 days today. And it's almost over. So this is very bittersweet. I'm excited for this route. I'm on Wabash Cache Lake, I think it's called. And I'm paddling up Farm Creek to an, uh, a lake I've I uh, wanted to go to for a long time. It's got a good reputation. That lake is Island Lake. And from there, I'll be trying to connect it back to the Magnetowan River through a series of lakes. Um, and it is a known route, but by the sound of it, the portages are not very good. Possibly uh, unlocatable. So, we'll see. So, very excited for this trip. But very sad that season's almost over. Fall colors have finally come in. It's uh, October 9th today, it's Thanksgiving Monday. I had great turkey lot yesterday, so I'm fueled up, ready to go. Coming up to the first beaver dam, first of many it sounds like, I think there are at least six leading into Island Lake.
Just great fall colors here. So beautiful. This creek is just lovely. Got camp pretty much set up, and now this is all I need. I've had way too much sun today. <laughs> I had my shirt off almost all day because it was just too hot to have it on. And uh, yeah, on top of just other exhaustion, I just want to lie in the hammock. It's absolutely lovely. It's too nice for October 9th. This can't be it's Thanksgiving Monday, so I'm thankful for this. It's just awesome. Well, here's where the adventure begins. This is the portage into uh, Wolf Lake, and it was very kind of hard to find. Cool. Otters, I think. Kind of hard to tell from here. It must be. Uh, so the trail, <laughs> I found a trail for a while. I was just following a creek bed, which was terrible. Camp's mostly set up, and this is the only campsite, the only decent one I found on the lake. So I'm glad for it. It's a beauty. It's a little island kind of in the middle of the lake. Just had an absolute disaster. My camera, my good camera, microphone, windscreen, completely submerged. They all fell in the water. They were in there for a few seconds. So I don't even know, I don't know if they work. I don't want to turn them on until they've dried out because I could only make things worse if I turn them on while it's wet. So I've got them all opened up there and hopefully they can dry out and as I was pushing the canoe off that campsite, this tipped and the weight of the camera pulled this right off and it all flew right over water, over the edge into the water. So I'm super, super upset. I'm gonna have to film on this little point and shoot for now. Oh boy. It's not good. I hope I get really, really lucky. Sun's down. Lake is covered in surface breaches. But I just don't feel like going out right now. Pretty bummed about my camera. I'd rather just relax. Finally found the portage in this bay, I was paddling around, couldn't find anything, and then finally saw this flag buried behind uh, all the pine needles. And I'm a little concerned right now because my phone battery is at 29%, and that's my only means of GPS. I tried walking back there, and there's not a clear trail. 
Yeah, at least not right here. Um, so, just worried about getting myself lost because after here it, it's probably equally hard to find a trail. So this could be that critical juncture where I either have a successful trip, get lost, or turn back here and go back the way I know I can get out. Of course I'm not going to do that. So onward and we'll see if this is a success or a disaster. Well I was on a trail and suddenly I can't see one anymore and all my inhibitions are telling me this is a bad idea. This is day 91 of camping this season. I don't think I've ever felt so worried about getting lost all summer. Even last summer did roughly the same number of days of camping and I don't think I ever felt so concerned. But I am a firstborn, I'm a rule abider, and I'm always listening to my inhibitions. And this is the one place where I get to, I let myself not listen. So I'm going to keep going and hopefully that there's a, a semblance of a trail again soon. And that led me to here, but I thought, I thought there was no way they wanted me to cross this. It's relatively deep, I don't know, a foot of water. And the earth beneath it is really squishy, so I'm just going to sink right in. And I couldn't see this before, but there is a little bit of uh, spray paint over there. So, uh, I guess I'm going to get my wet shoes on and cross this. It's either that or turn back. Made it, finally. This, this is what you want a uh, Portage GPS track to look like. That is not. That dotted black line is the ATV trail. When you turn off that ATV trail, it, it actually still is an ATV trail and that's why my track is so straight, well, relatively. But that was chaos. Four Bear is the most scenic lake so far. It's lined with uh, steeply sloped rock. It usually suggests that it's a pretty deep lake. Anyway, it's beautiful. Coming up to some more here. Fish. It's getting chilly. It's supposed to be around two or three overnight, and it's going to be cold, but uh, there's something I love about it. Em and I were talking about it on the last trip to Wolf Lake. How uh, there's something about the chill of fall that is comforting. And I couldn't find the right word for it, but the closest I can come is the rawness of it. Something beautiful about it. it just feels like the north, it feels like Canada. And I love it. I'm sure it'll never come out on this little camera, but there actually is an aurora. It's faint, but relatively high. It's well above the horizon. And it's still early. Sun only set. I don't even know if it was an hour ago. But I'm going to keep an eye on this. chilly last night.
Lake's all misty. Just uh, hooked into another nice walleye. It was chaos landing it. My paddle started sliding over the edge. I had to grab it. Then my net, which I was about to use, fell into the water. <laughs> Luckily, this guy stayed on. Uh, got it on my spin jig again. Really nice. Golden walleye. Nice fish. I'm not going to lift him out. I'm just going to let him go. This portage now into uh, Ball Lake is the one I don't know anything about. I'm going to try going up the creek for as long as I can and then maybe portage and line through it. I don't know. Um, so I need a lot of time for this, this day because after that I have a like 1300 meter portage I think which actually gets me into Sinclair so lots of work ahead of me today. Navigable, nice sculpted rock along the way. Ball Lake is one of the most picturesque so far. Wraps around in this cool uh, kind of a C shape, like the letter C that is. And it's just really, really nice. No development really, there is a boat cached here so I'm guessing there's ATV access there but otherwise very pure well there's no trail can't find one any anywhere I saw someone had posted GPS tracks and it looked like their trail ended around here but there's no trail marker amazing I was praying this would happen. A flag, a trail. <laughs> I didn't want to push back all that way. I'm already exhausted. Woo! Sinclair Lake looks like a gem. Not an easy portage. Holy cow, I'm spent. Ends with this steep little put in, too. Along with this rock, which is just waiting to murder someone if they ever fall on this incline. Oh. sinking in this is my last night in the backcountry this year kind of a tough pill to swallow which uh, probably sounds ridiculous considering I've had over 90 of them this year alone most people get a tenth of that um, but still makes me ache I don't know how, how to describe uh, how much I love this, but A, enough to do it for tomorrow will be day 93, 93, so enough to do it that many times in one year, and B, being without it for the next six months um, is very hard. It's like being away from the woman you love for six months, really, is how it feels, and uh, just, uh, it's like heartache, so I'm really going to miss it, it's been spectacular, and uh, I'm happy to be on Sinclair for the last night, this is a really beautiful lake, just look at this, heading through this little channel, so beautiful. So, I better enjoy it, last 24 hours. Well, 
thought it was a pretty long night. Mild, but uh, everything else was disturbing. There was that uh, branch that fell in the tent that just set me on edge. And uh, the call of nature awoke me in the middle of the night and then again this morning. And my sleeping bed, I just can't sleep on it anymore. I really should have got a better one for this much sleeping and camping. Um, so, I suppose these are good things because it makes leaving today a bit easier. These are all the things that uh, make you appreciate the comforts of civilization. So, maybe it's good. We've got coffee boiling there and water for uh, granola with milk and bananas. Should be good. And I gotta get packed up ASAP and get moving because I got a lot of ground to cover today to get back to the car. Literally just as I set out in the canoe, the rain starts coming down harder. Yeah, this is going to be a long day. It's really coming down. The river is pretty nice, but uh, there's a bit of a headwind and that's whipping the drizzle into my face. Uh, but, like I was saying, this makes it a little bit easier to leave today, on the last day, and, uh, whoa, almost lost another camera, uh, and really, as much as a huge fish or an aurora or something epic would have been the perfect finale for this trip, really this is the most fitting <laughs> end of the trip. Backcountry is not always easy, and uh, this is a perfect example. 2200 20, meter portage coming up in a, I don't know, probably a couple hours paddle with the headwind. Makes for a perfect last day. Did a waterfall. Of course, there's fish. There's at least one fish here. Don't even care about sliming my gloves today. They're a mess. They're soaked. I'm soaked. Rain jackets barely holding up. Oh, look at that. At the first set of rapids, and that means the start of the portage. It's right around, back around the corner there. There's an old cabin and a little portage sign. Hopefully it's a good portage, or it's going to be long. I am very wet, kind of cold, and I don't have any food to eat quickly aside from chocolate and nuts. I don't have a proper lunch, so I'm starting to feel a little bit miserable. I think a little white water will get my blood pumping again. I'm just going to tuck into the side of it here and get a quick run. It's actually really powerful. Look at this. Way beyond my skill level. But I'll just tuck in right here and have a little fun. Stupid. <laughs> <Woo -hoo! laughs> uh. Yep, that's just what I needed. <laughs> uh. All right, on to the portage. So far, so good. It's a wide open ATV trail, and aside from some massive puddles, which are quite beautiful. Woo. Finally behind me. Almost 
almost two hours, 7,150 meters in the total distance because of the double carry. Still a pretty good paddle back to uh, the car, so it's not over yet. Six months ago, I decided to record my first trip of the season on a whim, just to, uh, just to see if it was fun. And it turned out it was a lot of fun. 93 days later, uh, I have so many memories to look back on and share. And that's been a huge part of this. Uh, as a soloist, the one thing you're always missing is uh, someone to share the moments with. And uh, by doing these videos and sharing them on YouTube, uh, I found that to be a really fun way to share the trip with someone, you know, albeit later and um, maybe not someone I know, but still just to be able to, to post it and share it with people who share this passion um, has really brought me a lot of joy this season. So anyone who's taken the time to uh, watch this year, I uh, really appreciate it. And I'm looking forward to fixing my camera. And, uh, and recording lots more next season. And uh, until then, you know, maybe I'll get a job or something. I'm at the Timmy's in Bancroft, beautiful Bancroft. Nice cliffs, I love this town, love driving through it. I'm heading north. Uh, when I said this was my last camping trip, I lied. I always do that. <laughs> it's never the last trip. Who can resist? Weather's decent, it's chilly, but, um, but pleasant enough. All right, I'm on Long Airy Lake, just outside of Algonquin, maybe in Algonquin, I'm not sure, but I don't think a permit's required. Judging by the access road, uh, I can't imagine Algonquin trying to charge anyone to use this space. The access road is very bad. I'm glad I had all-wheel drive, even on this nice, mild, sunny day. Anyway, uh, I never end up seeing the Northern Lights. I expect this outing to be no different, <laughs> but if you don't try, you're never going to succeed. So I'm here, and uh, worst case, I hope uh, I can get into some splake. This is a stock lake with quite a few splakes, so odds are okay. Fire going feels really good on my cold hands, especially. It's getting dark, and now I wait. The sky is clear to the north, which is fantastic. There's hope. So, there's no aurora, not even a glimmer. But Gotta keep trying. Ended up getting to minus two last night according to the weather forecast. Um, but it wasn't too bad for some reason. I guess the sweater was keeping me really warm. I am 
very bummed to not have seen the Aurora again, but uh, what can you do? Uh, I can get so carried away sometimes with romanticizing a, the potential of a trip. I just dream it up to be something uh, that it can never live up to quite often. <laughs> dreams are good. It's good to have dreams, um, but dreams are also bad. Don't have dreams. I just want to close out the season by saying a few words about the environment. There is a lot going on ecologically in the world today uh, and a lot of scary things and you may not uh, feel concerned about it maybe your life hasn't been immediately impacted maybe you don't believe that it will be in the future but you have to at least acknowledge there's a chance that we're badly screwing up the world and maybe irreversibly and if we do that uh, our civilization could fail and more important than humanity Earth could be ruined. And if you're watching this channel, this video, you're probably someone who cares about nature and the backcountry, and you can appreciate the beauty that's here, which is incredible. To destroy it is something that I can't even bear the thought of. It makes me incredibly sad to, to even imagine that. So, if you are someone who cares, about nature or you enjoy nature, you have uh, a huge opportunity to help shape the future. A good thing to do is to just try and commit yourself to pick one big thing that you want to do for nature, commit yourself to it, stand up for it, tell others how you feel about it, set an example, and you'll become a leader. On, on that matter and uh, it's surprising who you'll find will listen and how much of an impact you can have so be a leader set an example nature is too precious to throw away finally got a hook into something I've had so many bites so many follows this is not a big splake at all I can feel that <laughs> It's getting close here, hopefully it doesn't pop off. Oh, it's so small. Oh, beautiful fish though. Oh, hooks out. Just thrashing around in the net. I'll give you a look. What a beautiful little fish. It's okay, buddy. You're going free. Oh, stunning. Puny, puny fish. Gorgeous. A little better this time. Still not big. <laughs> not much of a fight from these little guys. Let's see. Oh, oh whoa, whoa. He doesn't like the net. There, come on. <laughs> Hook came out as I was getting it in the net, just made it in. Oh, it's not really any bigger actually. Just a dink, but it's as pretty as dinks come. Oh, gorgeous. Come here, buddy. I'll let you go. Look at the pattern. Nature. Nature is stunning. Protect this, please. Lots of fish in here, but not enough biting. I'm gonna call it. I gotta head out, get food. It's misting. It's been misting all morning, so. I'm ready to roll out. Hard to leave, because this is it.
you know you're starting to let go of uh, the constraints of time when you start having naps. This is so vindicating when nature cooperates, when weather cooperates. Nature needs our respect, but weather, <laughs> weather just demands our respect. Couldn't get any better right now. I just feel so at peace, so at home. This is the type of day that makes you feel really lucky just to be alive. The world's messed up, especially environmentally, but when you're out here uh, connecting with nature, you can't help but feel like you want to fight for it. Do anything to protect it. If you are someone who cares about nature or you enjoy nature, you have a huge opportunity to help shape the future. Nature is too precious to throw away. <laughs>